remember I mentioned that they are usually to do with shame issues mm -hmm. so, and, and a lot related to sexual shame issues. Mm -hmm. And hot and cold also mm -hmm. very much anger and fear mm -hmm. as well. So, so they are a combination of when a person is in a state of fear, all the extremities will start to go cold. So if you find you've got cold hands and cold feet, for example, and that's a fairly constant thing with you, then there's fears within you that you are not facing. Right? If you find that uh, you um, often feel sort of a feeling of anger rise within you that you keep, keep down, but you also feel like hot at night, or you feel like you need a fan on all the time, or you feel like you need the aircon down <laughs> quite a lot, then it will usually be related to issues of shame or anger that uh, you're actually experiencing in those things. The truth is that the human body is capable of, a la of coping with a large variety of temperatures without having clothing. And, and, and if we are very, very, if we are in a very, very, you know, slim area, like anything below 22 and anything above 26 <laughs> is no good, then, then what's actually going on is that there is emotions being triggered at those temperatures and you need to allow yourself to go into those emotions rather than using the air conditioning mm. thermostat. <laughs> right? so, so allow yourself to trigger these emotions. Anything that makes you uncomfortable generally has some fairly large emotions underneath them. And if you allow yourself to just go into your discomfort rather than avoiding your discomfort, you will find you'll be able to access whole groups of emotions that you are masking by being comfortable. The same applies, by the way, to food. Um, like many people find that, you know, one hour after the time to eat and they are feeling like pretty antsy, right? Pretty upset. And if that's the case, my suggestion would be leave it two hours before you eat and really let yourself get into the emotion that's in there. Because there's an emotion there that's causing you to get into that state. The body can cope with... The body actually can live on very, very minor amounts of food. And in fact, once you're in a condition of abundance with God, you actually will not need food if you don't want it. And so the body can live really, really easily uh, through other sources of energy rather than food. If you feel like you must have food, then usually there's emotions driving, driving that desire. Let yourself feel them and let yourself work through them. Yeah. Are we on the same subject? No. We've got more on this one for a while. <laughs> um, I have a couple of questions for you. Now, if you're talking about hot and cold the way you feel. All right, like, uh, I'll get specific. For myself, when I get ready to go to sleep or something, I think that I'm sort of chilly, but my former partner would say that I felt so hot that I would burn them. And this was a very consistent thing every, every time I go to sleep. And it didn't matter whether I lay down or I just actually fall asleep on the couch. They said just to touch my skin was burning. Am I dealing with something in that, or is it because I felt comfortable to myself? And yeah, you're going to have to trust yourself. But there are some obviously some things about about that. If your body temperature is hotter than average, then there are always emotional reasons why. Right? Now, when your body temperature is hotter than average, you will actually probably feel colder in certain circumstances. Mm -hmm. um, than the average person. Uh, and the same goes with the opposite. If your body temperature is colder than average, you might feel hotter than certain people. Um, but all of these things are based upon emotions within the soul, all of them. The key is to not intellectualize them, but rather just allow yourself to get into a state of discomfort. Mm -hmm. See, what, what we do nowadays is we get, we're often uncomfortable. But what we do is we adjust our environment to make ourselves feel comfortable. So let's say, uh, like, uh, oh yeah, I'm allergic to cats, so what do I do? Remove the cats. Yeah. Right? <laughs> I'm, uh, you know, I don't, I'm allergic to dog hair, so what do I do? Yeah, I'm, you know, don't like anything under 22 degrees, so what do I do? I move to Florida. Right? 
<laughs> you know, that's what we do. Right? Yeah. We, we create our environment to make ourselves more comfortable. So the question becomes, why, why not firstly deal with the emotion that's creating that discomfort? Because if you do that, you won't be masking it with an action. There, are, there will be many times in your future progression where you'll be tempted to mask an emotion with an action to make you feel more comfortable. For example, the other day, I was in Barbados and I went swimming in the sea, and I was going swimming every day in the sea, but there were some emotions coming up, and I talked to some really evil spirits the day before as well, and there was a combination of events that occurred where I got stung by a jellyfish. It uh, stung me right from here, right the way down through my thigh as I swam over it. And uh, I don't know if any of you have been stung by one, but uh, yeah, for about the next six or seven hours, it was pretty painful. Now, I know there's a physical way for me to get out of that stink, right? Uh, and quite easy. But what I decided to do was to stay in it. Right? So I felt like the whole side of my body was burning. Um, and I was crying and, and just sobbing and letting myself feel all of my emotions from it. Right? Rather than choosing just to... Or, or we on it or something. You know, and, and, just, and it all just go away. So, so I attracted that event. That event was attracted by an emotion within me that I needed to deal with. So I allowed myself to go through that emotion, even though it was really painful for me at the time, in order to actually fully release that emotion. So because I'm doing this at night, like that, would I be dealing with emotions in the other realm or in this realm? You could be dealing with in the other realm, but don't, don't then go down the road and think, well, if I can process in my sleep state, that's really good. No, so what that's not what I'm doing. doing. I'm just yeah, don't go down that track, because all you'll do there is justify a heap of awake state emotions that you want to deal with. So, what would be a way to at least discover what emotions I'm dealing with? Why do you need to? Okay, just let them go and let them... They'll just come up. Just let them go and let them... See, one of the biggest problems we face with emotional processing is we want to know why. And honestly, it, 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 like, do you think little Luca wants to know why he's screaming? Like, <laughs> he just screams, doesn't he, until it's done. Like, do you think he wants to know why he's crying? No, he doesn't. He just cries until it's done. Become like a child with your emotions. Right? Let yourself just feel what they are. You don't have to know what they are. Because knowing what they are doesn't release them. Feeling what they are is the only thing that releases them. So we just, just let them go, let them feel, and we don't really care. No. And usually afterwards you'll become clear about what they are anyway. But even if you don't, well that's okay because there are whole groups of emotions that you will not know what they are even afterwards because you, weren't, you didn't have a conscious memory at their time of creation. So in other words, from the moment of conception right the way through to sort of the time that you can remember, there's whole groups of emotions you were soaking up from your parents, for example, and your environment that you really do not have any intellectual awareness of, aside from the law of attraction telling you what they are. Let yourself just feel them. Don't worry about trying to explain them or where they came from or what event triggered them and all those kind of things. In the end, all of that information probably will come to you. But in the end, the information really is pointless anyway because it doesn't make it any better. All you need to do is feel the emotion. And that's what's going to make it better. Does that make sense? Yeah, it does. And I have one more question in, the, in this sort of realm. Um, you were talking about how the physical body is a manifestation of some of the emotions from our past, like different physical things that take place as we get into different age groups and things. As we release that stuff, does our body revert back? So an indicator for, a, a, you know, I also like indicators. <laughs> Sorry, kind of engineer. But an indicator would be to look at what our body is doing and it's telling us. Mm -hmm. Very much so. And as it starts making, as we make the changes, the body will reflect those changes on the outside. That's right. And on the inside. Like, so your body, like, let's say you have digestive problems all of your life. 
Well, that's emotional based. And if you deal with those emotions related to the second and third chakras, all of those digestive issues will disappear. You'll know they've disappeared and you'll feel good all of a sudden. You won't have to take alka seltzers and, <laughs> and everything else to, to make yourself feel better. You just feel better. And it's the same with pretty much all emotions. You might have joint pain. Joint pains are related to different types of emotions too. So if you've got joint pain, a lot of people take glucosamine or whatever it is. Glucosamine. Omega-3s. Or omega-3s and omega-6s omega 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 and all those kind of things, which is fine. You know, you can do whatever you like there. That's your call. But at the end of the day, they're all emotionally based. And you will find once you deal with the emotions, they will disappear. I had some really bad problems with my hips clunking. Like they would clunk like a... You know, like tractor. You know, every time I went like that, I go clunk, clunk, clunk. You could hear it, like you could hear it, like five or ten feet away. And uh, and now all that's disappeared just through working my way through some of the emotions that, that control the muscles all the way through, all the way through the lower half of my body. So uh, everything that you experience is going to be have an emotion, and when you release the emotion, you will change. Your body will change. Now, obviously, as you're if you're older, the recovery process is a little slower. And it's slower because of all, the con all of the damage Emotion. we've done to our body emotionally <laughs> up until that point, right? So, you know, a, a child, if they work through an emotions that causes a certain illness, you know, within a few days, they can often be just totally different. As an adult, it may take a month or two or a bit longer to recover from some of the things that actually change within us emotionally. But yeah, the body is a very, very good barometer. So let me ask you along these lines about, uh, about comfort. Just a very good illustration from the last night. It, it may be totally off base or it may be on target. But when I was, last night I was sitting in one of these awful white chairs. Okay? <laughs> awful white chairs. And I was, I was absolutely in pain. I mean, I, I don't know if anybody knows me, but I was whisking around all the time and trying, because I was actually, uh, Bending it over, and I felt like I was going to fall over. So finally, I got up. I got up, and I finally sat back there. And went to the now, is that something silly, or is that actually somehow related to also seeking comfort? All pain is related to something emotionally. Mm -hmm. Like uh, last night in the first half of the session, I had back pain. In the second half of the session, I didn't. Mm -hmm. And that was related to emotions that I was conscious of while I was speaking in the first half of the session. Mm -hmm. so, so every single thing you experience is emotional. Of course you can always get into a more comfortable position and then say that emotion doesn't exist, which we, is what we often do. So what we often finish up doing is, oh well, yeah, no, my bum's sore, so <laughs> I'll go and find a comfortable chair yeah. and my bum won't be sore anymore. And now obviously there are some things that are going to hurt the physical body. And, but then you've got to ask yourself, well, why did you choose that chair in the first place anyway? Like, do you know what I mean? Because like, you would have, but wouldn't you have initially, like, before I sat down on these, I've got a chest, one of these, you know what I mean? <laughs> and why wouldn't you have done that? Yeah. There must be something going on emotionally that causes you to feel like you weren't worthy to do that. So you just mm -hmm. ask yourself those mm -hmm. questions. Mm -hmm. Let yourself feel what's going on. But there's no harm in comfort. Obviously, our Father wants yeah. us to be comfortable. But the question with anything we do is, am I doing this because I'm avoiding something? Mm -hmm. uh, and so a lot of people, uh, just can I say a bit more about this? A lot of people drink alcoholic beverages because they're avoiding something. In fact, almost all people who drink alcoholic beverages, beverages are avoiding something. You think about when you want to drink an alcoholic beverage, when you want to drink some wine, when is it? When you really feel like you need one, when it is. <laughs> well, the French drink wine all the time. They it's, do. It's the part of their the culture. But here, let but here you, you feel about relax. when you're doing it. That's the question I'm asking. When relaxing. I feel like I want to relax. I feel like I need some help to relax. Yeah. Right? Many times that's the motivator, right? Mm -hmm. So then ask yourself, why do I feel like I need to relax? What have I done today where I've treated myself so badly that now I need a tool to help me relax? There's something going on. Obviously, I'm, I'm trying to run away from something emotionally or I'm treating myself badly enough where I need a, something that is a depressant to actually keep, to make me relax. Let's look at coffee. How many big coffee drinkers? Yeah. 
Okay. Coffee, you know, obviously coffee damages an unborn child, right? You know that, right? So therefore, if coffee damages an unborn child, then obviously there are issues with caffeine in terms of how it affects the body. You can drink as much coffee as you want. I can guarantee you, though, you will not ever be a one with your father drinking coffee. Huh? Yeah. Or any caffeine, right? Not just coffee. Because you're choosing to harm your body, right? Um, and there's an issue morally. When you're choosing to harm your body, there obviously is an issue within yourself as to why you feel that like you need to do that. And most people go for coffee for reasons of stimulant. Right? They need to be stimulated. They need to get a pick-me-up to get themselves into a certain emotional condition. Ask yourself before you have the drink, why do I feel like I need this pick-me-up? Right? What's going on within me emotionally? You see, we're constantly using all these little tools, right? All these little food is another one, big one. Uh, TV, videos. No, there's nothing wrong with it. Like you can have your coffee if you want coffee. There's nothing wrong with any of these things. I'm just saying to you that if you are avoiding an emotion, now your motive is really out of harmony with love. What you're saying is the reason for using it. If you're using it to help you relax, then, or if you're trying to get comfortable to avoid the emotion, but you want to protect your body too, right? So you don't want to mm. put it in a situation right. of harm. Yeah. There could be a dependency on it, though. That's what you're talking about. Mm -hmm. Well, it's not even the dependency. It's like, why am I using anything at this moment? Why am I choosing to do this particular thing at this moment? Like, what's going on within me emotionally? Be aware. Just let yourself become aware of what's really happening. Because yeah. in the end, you will be completely aware of every single emotion passing through you at any one moment. That's where you're headed to be completely aware of every single emotion that is passing through you at any single moment. Is that what happens when you die? As you're dying? Well, you don't have to die to get into that state. <laughs> no, no, I just wondered, because people say your life flashes before your eyes, kind of, is the old superstition thing. Yeah, no, the, what's happening when you're dying is a little different. But if I could get to that perhaps later and we go back to this subject. Okay, I didn't mean, I just... Yeah. The, the, the issue, the issue for, mo for most of us is that we are constantly using tools to deny our emotions. And if we can stop doing that, if we can notice what we're doing and stop doing that, what will happen is the emotion will be exposed. When we run to the addiction, we are actually every single time avoiding the exposure of the underlying emotion. So let's say you know, I get up in the morning, the first thing I normally do is have a coffee. Right? And maybe a cigarette too, just to, to help it. Um, so then the question I need to ask myself, all right, why am I doing that to myself emotionally? Like what, what emotions am I in this state when I first wake up? How am I really feeling right now? And you'll find that it's just a world will open up to you if you can ask yourself that one question. Because you'll find that there are certain emotions of fear and anger and sadness and everything from your sleep state experience that you're not allowing yourself to feel as soon as you wake up that you're wanting to get away from in order to pick yourself up and face the day. You will also feel even things like, wow, I don't even want to face today. Mm -hmm. Like, do I, I don't even want to go to work today, but I have to. Oh, do I really have to? You'll work through all issues of de desires and longings and all those kind of things you'll work through as well, right? If you just face some of these little tiny minor issues, which in reality often are huge issues capped by an addiction, right? There's a little cap on the top, like a screw cap on the bottle, which is the addiction, like a coffee in the morning. That's a good way to get rid of all of that. <laughs>